than when um, the, the person's like logo on their shirt is the same as the, the logo of the sponsor because there's normally an indication that there's like a half hour presentation coming about how we're so proud of our new ROGMS policy. Um, I'm really just going to focus on one uh, particular project. It's a, it's a, it's a small project. Um, I'm just going to uh, talk you through it. Um, and we'll talk about the technologies that we used at, at, at the end. Uh, anybody who was at the State of GIS this year might be a little bit familiar with the, um, the layout of the, um, the project because it is like a follow on from, uh, from that. Uh, but let's just uh, uh, get started. So this was something we did with the um, University of New England and um, they had data to do with Van Diemen's Land which I'll go into uh, a bit of background uh, on. Um, so Tasmania was named Van Diemen's Land until uh, 1856. Um, and it was named after Anthony Van Diemen, the Governor General of the Dutch East Indies, who had sent the Dutch explorer Abel Tasman on the discovery voyage in the, uh, the 1660s. Now, it's, it's probably because I went to a public school that I didn't actually know that there was a connection between Tasman and Van Diemen. It was like Van Diemen was Tasman's boss. And so it's kind of a nice justice that we're actually in Tasmania uh, now. Uh, Van Diemen's Land could have been settled by the Spanish if their government had listened to the recommendations of one of their senior uh, officers. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, even though it was uh, in the 1660s that started being mapped, it wasn't for like another 150 years before people started getting serious about actually um, uh, establishing a, a colony there. The British established a small military outpost in 1803 on the eastern shore of the Derwent to forestall claims to the island by French, uh, by French explorers. Um, and between 1804 and 1877, hundreds of convict labor, labor stations were established for construction of public works, including roads and bridges. These were road gangs, human stations, road stations, uh, etc. Um, and data on these stations has been collected by uh, ARC grants through the University of Tasmania and from research by uh, John Dent, who's a, uh, a surveyor in Launceston and has been collated by the University of New England. So that's sort of uh, a bit of the history of Van Diemen's Land and the history of where the, the data uh, came from for uh, this project. Now what I'm going to um, hopefully be able to do is um, tap into a live uh, demo rather than just showing you um, the slides. So we'll see how, um, how far we get uh, with this. Um, Um, so this is the, uh, the base map that you um, start off with uh, when you come onto the Van Diemen's Land uh, site. And we actually used um, existing um, uh, open data that was available for, for the state in order to build our own uh, uh, base map that was uh, tiled because we weren't really happy with any of the existing um, base maps that, that were available. One of the things about um, presenting historical data is that as much as possible, you don't actually want to show any of the stuff that's on the state that you would use to work out where you are that didn't actually exist uh, at the time. So we've done a little bit of that whilst also putting in some, some things that didn't really uh, exist either. Like for example, you know, a few of the uh, the water bodies are a bit larger now than they used to be back then because we've damped some of them. Um, but uh, in general, we've just got a few uh, a few points on there for people to work out um, uh, where they are, and then we've uh, put the data over the top. Um, the data, it's not a, a huge uh, amount of data, and what we've actually got is, because that it was all um, uh, time-based, uh, we've actually got a, a time slider uh, across the, the top uh, that uh, we can use to actually uh, see sort of this uh, development process um, three times. So in 1804, we've just got this one, uh, one location uh, down near um, Hobart, and then uh, we can use the slider to sort of advance through the years, and as various roads get constructed and as more um, convict stations get established, you get that data um, flowing through. So obviously you can see we've got these uh, numbers within the, the, the points when we've got uh, multiples and those uh, will spit back out into the individual components once we get nice and, uh, nice and close. And so that's just the, just the points. Obviously you can hover here and then click on a particular uh, station and, and get all the information that was uh, collated, including who uh, produced it, the, the years, the, uh, what sort of um, uh, station at was what they what they're working on and then obviously that's just the points and uh, we've also added uh, various elements of, of symbology so you can talk about where the budget came you can look at where the budget came from about uh, the type of place that it was who the agency responsible was uh, for them and so we've got sort of multiple elements of uh, 
symbolism, uh, or sorry, symbology there. Um, uh, and then you can see those uh, sort of anagrams across um, across the state. And so yeah, so this data goes stretches all the way out until 1877. Um, and you might have seen that that was fairly responsive in terms of how quickly that was uh, showing up. That's because the data is like a small enough amount that we can actually keep it all locally and not be having to go and ask the, the server for what the, the data is whilst we're, whilst we're doing that. So that's really nice. Uh, yeah, so that's the, uh, all of the um, convict stations and also um, all of the roads that were constructed over that um, period of time. Uh, we can obviously just take the other end of the, the range slider if we just care about like, you know, 1850 to 1877, we can uh, adjust that slider as well. And uh, then we've got a, a basic search uh, functionality as well. So if we were just interested in um, female factories, for example, um, that's just uh, in, in real time, obviously searching the data without, again, whenever you go to the service, that comes up, uh, up nice and quickly. You go to the Hobart one, see the details uh, for that, and then get snapped to that particular um, location as well. And of course, we've got the ability to uh, to get to some more sort of uh, interesting uh, base maps as well to sort of form better interpretation of, of the data, particularly all the stuff that you, you guys know about, it, it comes from um, the list. That's all <coughs> going good. We also, um, fortunately, were able to um, provide a, um, a download link as well. So um, the, the data here is actually um, available under Creative Commons. And I think the idea is, is that um, the, they're really trying to encourage people to uh, attach any um, data they've got from other research sources or, or anything else to this data or this data is coded so they'd hopefully like to be able to say okay well if you've got anything that's associated with this stuff please like download our data and attach it on rather than creating your own data set and, and, and your own um, sort of convention for, for, for recording that data. Um, all of this is available also on a, a mobile device if you are a tourist and interested in, in going around and looking at what the sites are like um, today uh, and you can switch on a, a GPS uh, functionality um, for that. It's the same code um, and it's not a separate app or anything uh, like that. And we've also had, we also developed a full blown sort of admin um, system for this which means that as more uh, research is performed and uh, more information is um, is available, so there's new uh, locations available, they can actually just upload a new version of their CSV uh, without actually us having to be involved. Of course, there's a huge possibility that it's going to fail because that's what CSVs are, are like, but um, the, from our experience, the, the people that we're working with are sort of knowledgeable about the fact that the CSV is sensitive in terms of its layout and uh, we've had success on at least one, uh, one occasion with them updating this particular uh, data which is uh, which is good we also have the ability in here for them to actually add their own uh, base maps so if they know about a um, a new source whether it's from the list map or wherever else they can uh, go in and, and add that themselves and also to add a uh, raster overlays uh, as well so you can have a, um, a, a GTF or whatever else we've uh, built the process to allow you to actually upload that GTF it's stored on our server the tiles are, are built for it uh, as well and um, those uh, overlays, whether it's like a map of old Hobart or a map of the entire state are available, um, they can be made available as well. So that's, that's all really nice, good um, evaluate stuff for, for the client. They sort of have a greater level of control over the future of this uh, product. So they don't have to like bring us up and get a, a new quote every time they want to make any tiny little change to the map. They've got all of this, uh, all this built in as, as part of the, the product. And, uh, it's really nice. We've got a um, certain amount of, uh, of user access control as well uh, within that. And so now I'm going to switch back across to the to my PowerPoint and pretty much just go through the slides as I had them and see uh, what I uh, what I missed. Yep, so that's the um, important CSV uh, section which I didn't show. So it's just a couple of representation of the basic import process. Um, yeah, so what did we use? Um, so for the, the front end, we use OpenLayers uh, 4, which is available under the Tupor CSV license. Um, we've had uh, a lot of uh, experience now either with OpenLayers by itself or uh, being used with, with Fusion and MapGuide, um, and that's uh, proven to be a, um, a, great, uh, a great workhorse for us, and we will probably be backing it in various ways in the, in the future as well. 
Um, on the back end, we're um, utilizing uh, GeoServer, so it's um, through GeoServer we are able to provide that service where um, the users can actually upload uh, their own uh, images. And uh, for the um, storage of the data before it gets actually loaded to the client, we're storing that in um, our Flood Street uh, database. Uh, this basically enables through uh, through PostGIS. Uh, and I think that's uh, that's my presentation. So I'll take uh, take any questions now. I missed the very beginning. Sorry, this was a project for UNE. I read that. Yeah. But it's available. It's open to the public to use. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. So there's a. Um, so where did so, I miss the slide bit? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the uh, that's true. I didn't actually have the URL. Um, uh, so, <laughs> you, you went to it, but I missed it, and then he said, "Welcome, Tim." And I'm thinking, "Okay, I've logged in here somewhere." Yeah. Um, so. So it is. Now let me get the URL data. Convictlandscape.com.au. Yeah, that's okay. I saw that, but is that what it's actually called? If I went into a search engine to look for this, that's what I type. Yeah. Yeah, you would. I don't think we're running very highly yet um, in terms of uh, search engines. Um, no, no, no. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to trip you up. I'm trying right. to say it is so interesting. I want to look at it. Convict <laughs> yeah, landscape. No, I it as well. Yeah, so I would be interested. Well, I mean, it, it is just amazing. And knowing John Depp put the uh, point data together, I saw there was a accuracy of uh, survey data was yes. one of the points. I mean, that to me is. It shows the, the the mind behind it is is as important as the data itself is the accuracy of it. Yeah, sure. That is fantastic. Oh, uh, so this is a, a second. It. This is like the second project in this convict landscapes series that it's turning out to be, and then the, the next step of this is actually going to be a, an Australia wide one. Uh, well. So wait a minute. What was the first one? Port Arthur. So this it is, was a mini, a sub like a sub. So game. so we've got Port Arthur, which had um, data, which I didn't present today. Yeah. Uh, but I presented before, which is on um, the offences that occurred within Port Arthur, and also the buildings that were constructed. So you can watch Port Arthur getting built through time. Yeah. And then the the second one was uh, was Van Diemen's Land, uh, which is. Yeah. Can I say, is it like a storybook from Esri? Is it is it has to me the look and feel of the. Um, Esri storybook, but but this is interactive, so you can. Whereas there's is um, a, a story told in images with maps, this is more an interactive, um, a, a, like a, a web interface where you actually can query the information and zoom into different parts of it. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, uh, you know, at the most basic level, you've got a, a web map that you're zooming in and out of. You've got points that you click on, and you get the information for them. Like that's a, a fairly um, you know, basic GIS uh, functionality as, as as most of us would, would know about. I guess the, the thing that we've uh, that we added on was this this time side of this ability to actually um, query particular moments in time. But you've used a uh, list map as a base map, whereas I thought they were proprietary uh, type platforms. No, they created their own. So this this particular one, we um, built our own. Um, At the start. But then when you had down the side, you had the option to, so you zoomed into the convict factory in Hobart, yes. and then you zoomed, you said show on map, and then as soon as you zoomed in, yes, that came up. Yeah, so they're available, and the attribution, the Creative Commons attribution is down the bottom, acknowledging yep. the source. Um, yeah, yeah. Perfectly within the license. Yes, cool. in a web interface. The, the reason I'm asking this is because a while ago I tried to start Reproduce. Do you, I don't know if you know. Um, sorry, the name's gone. A geologist here in um, uh, Hobart who recently died, who wrote um, this the uh, the uh, walks in southern Tasmania. Uh, David. Yeah. Sorry. David. Um, David. David. David yeah. So he wanted to republish all his books, and I said to him the better platform to do it on was with a. Uh, uh, sorry, all his walks plus 117 new ones was to do them on a list map background. But I approached the list about doing that and they said, no, you have to pay $300 in advance for each use of that, each map you produce, you have to use as a commercial uh, mm -hmm. operation. And so I was really curious as to if somebody wanted to, uh, they, like you said, they're a visitor, they could then print this map as a paper product 
but it's open source. It's being made available in an open source environment. Well, Dan's much more the expert on this than I am, so I could say anything, but uh, I just hand it over to him. Well, it's up to that. Like the end user might be violating a license, but that's not our problem. The fact that yeah. it's publicly accessible, if they choose yeah. to print, like people take screenshots of Google. I mean, on the news all the time, you see yes. Google <laughs> images being used. Yep. Is, I saw today's presentation, the ABC guy had a, I recognise that as a Google yes. image without being attributed. Yes, but, yeah, yeah. yes. So, so I, 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 that's how I knew it was list yeah. data because it changed your, your credit yeah. at the bottom appeared, which is what happens when you do it yeah. on a, a web page. Yeah, I, I just think it's wonderful. And, and you said it's, it is or it intends to be available as a phone app as well. It is available as a phone app. If you go to compilandscapes.com.au, then it's available as a web app. You can't get it from the App Store or Google Play. No, but you can look at it in a web um, enabled. It works offline because the original target audience, the first product was the Port Arthur one. So mm. tour, plenty of tourists go to Port Arthur. And the idea is that they could walk around and see, I'm a dot here, change the time slider and see the buildings pop in and out of existence. Yep. They go, oh, this is when this building was built. And you can, that one has more examples of the historic overlays mm. that the um, historians have uploaded themselves. Right. And they get processed into tiles. So you can turn on the, like a lot of them, about 1842 watercolor images that someone's drawn yeah. and see those. Yeah. And they're all available. But the idea was that, yeah, it works offline. Offline. Because the, mm. the, the initial download has to be online. But then when you, Optus reception particularly, which a lot of tourists will come in from the mainland yeah. with Optus. It's hopeless. Yeah. Um, and so if they get it when they're in the reception building, mm. when they do have reception on the phone, then they can proceed to use the entire app experience offline. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and would you imagine the same thing happens on the Midlands Highway Corridor? Yeah. So um, not the entire app, the base maps and yeah. the tile images won't work, but the, the rest of the vector data, the ones with the building footprints, the offences, and yeah, you can, you can search by name. So if you've got a relative, yeah. you can find out that, you know, Someone got two weeks um, solitary confinement for stealing a potato. Yes, <laughs> it's yes. quite interesting browsing yeah. through that data. I, I I think they've done wonders at Port Arthur actually for making their, their information available and in an interesting format. This is just wonderful. I just love it. Thank you. Um,